Hey everyone, Dave Putz from JKP Holdings. Alongside me, as always, Mr. Nathan Turner. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone doing? So, Nathan, I wanted to congratulate you. First off, I see you got the tickets out and the website is up for DMA. Finally, my goodness, that was uh, much longer than I anticipated getting that ready to go, but uh, but it's live, it's up, tickets are now available. So the note Everybody run to the back of the room. All that. <laughs> so for those who are not familiar with DME is it's a no conference, right? It's for a collection of individuals like ourselves to get together and talk and learn from other investors. So if you are yeah. at all looking to learn or even experience, you should look at a network, you're going to get a vast collection of different people there. Yeah. And one thing that I think is really exciting this year is uh, you and I have been talking to a bunch of seller finance, creative finance people, yeah. and we're going to get a bunch of those guys there. Uh, which is fantastic. So you've got a bunch of people that are creating notes, looking for an outlet, paired up with a whole bunch of note buyers that are looking for notes to buy. And we're going to come together at DME and meet each other and network and make contacts and get some deals done. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. So with that said, what do you think people will be the most interested in coming down there for besides networking? What kind of topics do you think that you'll be having if you already started to get involved? This one's going to cover all kinds of stuff. We've got, um, it's a combination of panels and solo presentations. So my whole vision for this whole thing is I want people to come and be able to not just network, and that's a huge part of it. I want people to be able to network and meet people, but I want there to be enough education so that people that are just getting started feel like they've gotten something and people that are experienced feel like they've also learned something gotcha. where it's not like, Hey, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But no, no, no. We're bringing in people that you've never met before people you've never heard before. Yeah. And you're going to be able to hear what they've got to say a different perspective. That's huge. I know like last week we were going through some assets and we were able to acquire a couple a uh, small pool of assets. Um, so things are starting to crack for us even. And I think it's this avenue that we're exploring in different facet. Um, these idea of the fact that it was $30 billion of assets created in 2022 is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's tons out there and, and I'm excited to have a bunch yeah. of those people there that people that are doing the origination. So that's, yeah. that's great. Yep. Absolutely. So I think for most of us, um, this stuff is really cool and valuable. Uh, people who are um, wanting to learn not just notes, but different kinds of people out there who are involved. I think people who are um, excited by this because of the fact that they can get into notes and that the, the, I guess the transfer from the origination to the buyer is almost complete. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, really looking forward to it. It's going to be really educational and and a place where you can come together and meet other people. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got some fun things going on there. The night before the conference, we've got an axe throwing tournament. What? We need to register for that separately, so Cool, but get to be part of that as well. And we'll have a, a DME axe throwing champion for the year. And then we'll see who takes the throne, the throne next year. So I'm sure you guys have all heard of, you know, performing and non-performing assets, right? Um, and a lot of times we get frustrated with them, right? Non-performing can be a bothersome situation. And we, on this last week's call, uh, our, our 10 week mastermind kind of junior group, we talked about this idea of building this bid calculator, right? And you can't just bid it, build it for the fact that we are hoping or praying that um, the asset will perform. A lot of times yeah. they won't. And you never know. And you have to build that in because just because they've been making payments steady for the last five years doesn't mean they're going to continue to make payments steady for the next five years. Um, we've been through that. We've seen it. We've experienced it. So you want to make sure that you've, you've accounted for all possible outcomes and that you're putting it together. And so putting that bid calculator together, we've spent two whole classes on that. We spent a lot of time, a lot of effort putting that together. Mine is even getting updated, which is fantastic. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, we continue to learn and grow. Yeah. So with that said, you know, I've done my fair share. We both grew up in this idea of a non-performing asset. And a lot of times people are saying, that's crazy, you know, because it's all 
different out there. Um, Non-performing asset to a lot of people who are getting into the space the last couple of years is almost rare because everything's performing. Everything's doing really well. And when they get in non-performing, yeah. they get themselves in a bind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They don't know how so, to do it. You know, what is it the route? We, we go through foreclosure. We go through that process. And we kind of have an asset at the end of it. Yeah. Right? Um, I know you do seem to do foreclosure. We're actually in great shape. If we have a few assets in foreclosure, but nothing like we used to have. Right? Yeah, we've planned for it. And that's all part of it, understanding that there's, this is a possible outcome. So plan for it, know what you're in for, what would, what would be the situation if that happened? And are you ready for that? And are you ready to, to take on a property if that's what the case might be? Gotcha. So um, I wanted to make sure that we, you know, get someone on that can help us through that process of how can we supersize our returns in the fact that we are hoping, I'm bringing her on here, Mr. Brian Allen, that we can take a situation that is not in good shape or maybe small return. And how can we leverage that into a great opportunity for us? Yeah. So Sabrina, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you're doing well. I know you're a little on the weather, but I'm glad to see you join us today. Hello, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Um, it sounds a little cliche-ish, but when, when you create a loan, you have to think about everything. So when you're starting at the beginning, you have to think about the end. So um, everybody gets all upset when you're originating a loan of all the things that you have to provide up front. And you know, you, <laughs> you know, you get all pissy when you have to get all those conditions to the underwriter, yeah. but there is a reason why. <clears throat> so when you're, when you're getting a loan, you're solid. Um, but when you stop paying, you're not. Right. But all of those things that you gather at the beginning is for a reason. And so um, there's an underwriting file that a lot of times during the process, when loans are sold in our world, they get lost. The underwriting file gets lost, mm -hmm. but that file is really, really golden. If you get mm. that, that collateral, that origination file yeah. with the collateral file, it has so much information in it. Yeah. Um, when you talk about supersizing that asset, um, because it really tells the story about where the borrower was at the time that they were perfect, or at least they qualified for the home. It's it's that origination story that all these Marvel movies are putting. Out. <laughs> yes. But um, having that origination story, that's a big deal. Uh, yes. And then you get to understand where they came from and why mm -hmm. they thought they could perform on this loan way mm -hmm. back when. Um, it's the glitz and the glam. Yeah. And it's the it's the assets. It's the four hundred one k. It's the IRA accounts. It's um, the cars they had. It's, you know, if there was a spouse, even if they weren't on the loan, but it may have been some other bank accounts, you see everything in that origination file, yeah. which is really golden for us yeah. if that file becomes non-performing and then we have to complete the foreclosure. Yeah. So I say, I say that to say, we, we set up at the beginning for failure. We don't think about that when we're buying non-performing assets, no. but we really do. Yeah. And that is your meal ticket. Yeah. At the end of the day, when the return looks very slim on the back end. Hmm. Um, so begin with the end in mind, set yourself up for success. So, and now we got to go back a little bit, Sabrina, because if anybody doesn't know Sabrina, you've been living under a rock, but Sabrina, tell us about, uh, you've got a ton of experience in this, especially on the origination side. So tell us, where did you start from and how did you get into what we now call notes? So um, by accident, um, <laughs> by going to work, that's how I got into this. 